how do we increase the amount of digestive enzymes? How do we restore the ability to produce them properly? It's not just about digestion. Like we think about bloating when we think about digestive enzymes. Oh, if I have more enzymes, it's gonna reduce the bloating. But what about the actual like nutrient extraction? What about the breakdown? There was a study that was published in pancreas that highlighted this perfectly. It was showing that when there was acute pancreatitis, for example, and pancreas was inflamed, there was less exocrine function. The pancreas is what produces the lion's share of our digestive enzymes. And they found that when the pancreas was inflamed, there was less overall enzymes, but there also ended up being less vitamin D absorption, less vitamin A absorption, and less vitamin E absorption of fat soluble vitamins. So the important thing to know is that, yeah, you might get bloated if you don't have digestive enzymes working well, but worse, you might end up with serious deficiencies in vitamins and minerals, right? So we have to pay attention to that. So we're gonna break it all down on how you can restore that function based upon pancreatic health. So let's jump right into it. When you're looking at digestive enzymes, we have to remember that like once enzymatic function goes down or enzyme production goes down, it's really hard to directly just stimulate the pancreas to produce more. We have to look at the underlying cause. The underlying cause is usually inflammation. That's why we've seen in that pancreas study that in the case of pancreatitis, which is a very acute, strong spike in inflammation, we see it very clearly, right? But we probably have low-grade inflammation occurring all of the time. Right? That's the big problem, right? So there's a couple different ways that we can potentially go about this. There's very strong links, although they haven't been vetted out with RCTs yet, between gut barrier health and inflammation associated with the pancreas too. So the best thing that we can do to sort of improve our digestive like enzyme function is take the load off of the pancreas a little bit. And then we go a kind of wraparound way, which is actually a little bit intuitive. So things like bone broth, things like collagen, things like glutamine, these can be very powerful when it comes to restoring gut barrier integrity. So the gut barrier integrity, that's like the tight junctions. And if they start to become disrupted and broken, then what happens is we have a pretty significant amount of inflammation that can occur, okay? Because you have different compounds, pathogenic compounds, uh, gram-negative bacteria, lipopolysaccharides that can bleed through, get through those bigger chunks that should be tight, and that causes systemic inflammation. But anything that is going to be localized to the area and involved in metabolism is gonna be much more subject to inflammation. Okay, obviously we have liver inflammation, we have pancreatic inflammation. So that's step number one. We need to kind of reduce that the best that we can. The other thing that we can do, and this is kind of an interesting thing, and there's not a lot of strong evidence with it, but the primary treatment for exocrine pancreatic insufficiency when you're not producing enough digestive enzymes is actually consuming digestive enzymes. So digestive enzymes occasionally can take some of the load off of the pancreas. Now we're gonna talk about the metabolic side, the glucose, the beta cell side, because that's a really, really important piece. But I just don't wanna deter people from occasionally using digestive enzymes. There's this common misconception that if you occasionally use a digestive enzyme, that you're going to disrupt the natural production of them. I have not seen any research that points one direction or the other. It would make sense that if you used them all the time, it would be problematic. But I do think that when you are consuming larger boluses of certain things like protein or a larger bolus of carbohydrates, it may not hurt to take some of the load off because the downstream impact that you could have and not absorbing the actual nutrients could be even more problematic than just like trying to gut through it all together. Uh, I put a link down below for a protein powder that I use from Sun Warrior that is really cool because it has digestive enzymes in it already. So that's like a perfect example where you're gonna have a protein powder that has the enzymes added to it. So you're not having to like take another pill. You're not doing it with all your meals. You're like, okay, I'm having a lot of protein and fiber, things that might be hard to digest. It would make sense to have some digestive enzymes with it. So it's dosed properly. So that is called Sun Warrior's Active Line. That is a 20% off discount link. I use whey protein and I use plant-based protein. I cycle through both of them. This is my preferred plant-based protein by far. It's also amazing tasting and by far satiates me much more than whey protein. Whey protein is slightly more anabolic for building muscle, but plant-based proteins for me, they are what I use when I need to curb appetite. So for appetite suppression and for overall just good still quality nutrition, I like Sun Warrior's active line. So that link down below, again, 20% off in the top line of the description underneath there. Highly, highly recommend it. Also gets you 20% off anything else. They have magnesium, they have all kinds of other stuff. Now the other piece of the equation is we have two different elements of pancreatic function, right? Really three, 
Okay, we have beta cells, which is what we commonly know of. That's uh, what produces insulin and helps us with insulin sensitivity. So if you're diabetic, those things aren't working really well, right? Okay, then we also have islet cells, which are the clusters of cells that contain beta cells, alpha cells, delta cells, and these other cells that are, influence hormones within the pancreas. And then, of course, we have the digestive enzyme part that we talked about. Now, there's theories that float around in the metabolic space that if there's stress on the hormonal side, that it can affect all attributes of the pancreas. So in essence, if you start stressing the pancreas so much with oxidative stress, stress from the liver, stress from just environmental stuff, that it can directly impact the other areas of the pancreas. The pancreas can kind of like shut down on some of its other functions. Now, some of that is speculative, some of it is vetted out. But one of the things that we have seen as far as like islet cells are concerned, which are the clusters of cells that contain beta cells, is that consuming ginger can be really powerful with that. There's a study that backs this up. This study was published in Bioscience Reports. They gave subjects water or water with ginger. And what they found is that the water with ginger actually increased the genes associated with overall, not just islet cell uh, restoration, but with beta cell mass. Now, what does that mean? It means it was actually increasing the mass of the beta cell, increasing the ability for it to produce insulin. Not only does this take a load off the pancreas, but also helps with our glucose. It also helps with our overall metabolism so that they're not stressed out trying to produce enough insulin. So a whole metabolic tie in here. Now from the digestive enzyme component, if the stress is off the pancreas, then maybe the pancreas can start to produce more of its digestive enzymes. So there's a couple other takeaways we want to talk about here, and it all kind of circumnavigates this whole pancreatic oxidative stress load. N-acetylcysteine can take some of the stress off the liver, which can take some of the stress off the pancreas. There was a study published in Scientific Reports that looked at this. It's pretty cool. They found that NAC compared to placebo reduced ALT, AST, and ALP liver enzymes significantly compared to control, which tells us that we're having some impact on liver detoxification pathways with glutathione. When the liver is less inflamed and less stressed, there's a strong link and argument to be made that the pancreas will have a little bit more of a, an easy time functioning. Because remember, the liver receives the signal from glucose and it passes that signal on to the pancreas. So if the liver is less stressed, then signaling pathways are all working better. Another thing that you can do is you can add magnesium in. Now, magnesium is highly vetted to improve insulin sensitivity, and this is helping at the insulin receptor level. So you came to this video thinking about digestion and digestive enzymes, and here we are talking about all these other things that circumnavigate that. It's kind of wild, but I'll give you one that does definitely have to do with digestion, and that is looking at apple cider vinegar. So apple cider vinegar, believe it or not, could do the opposite of what you're thinking. It can actually delay digestion but it can delay digestion enough so that the smaller amount of enzymes that you do have have a chance to do their job. And that's why you can make the argument that apple cider vinegar could improve some nutrient absorption if you're slowing down digestion. It's sort of like uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists like Ozempic. They slow down digestion, but that could actually have an impact on nutrient absorption. Okay? So if we're doing all these things together, not to mention apple cider vinegar is gonna lower glucose, which takes the load off the pancreas. We're talking things like taking care of the gut health first, bone broth, collagen, glutamine. Okay, five grams of glutamine can be extremely powerful for sealing sort of that gut layer a little bit more. So that's a really powerful step one. Take care of the gut, control the inflammation that way. Next is we're gonna have the N-acetylcysteine. We're gonna take care of things like that. We're gonna have the magnesium, which is really, really important. And we're gonna have the ginger. So we've got this multi-pronged approach that can actually potentially help you produce more enzymes. Now, another thing that I will note that's really of importance here, you can drink too much water with meals. Okay, I would recommend sipping water during meals and have your larger surges of water intake in between meals. You can dilute the enzymatic potency. And if there is a feedback loop, which I am not aware of with enzymes, you really wanna make sure that when you are consuming food, the enzymes are able to do their job so that they have a proper feedback loop and you're not diluting them. So there's all these signaling processes, right? I don't think it makes sense from an evolutionary perspective that we would have a large bolus of food and a large bolus of water at one point in time. You're diluting hydrochloric acid, you're diluting enzymes, and who knows? But if you kind of tailor it so that the water is coming either before or after, you're getting the hydration, but you're not disrupting the digestion. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.